Hi, shalom, shalom. I'm waiting a few seconds to see if anybody joins me. Um, as usual, I am getting started a little bit late. I'm waiting. Hi, Misty. Shalom. I'm just going to wait another moment or so and see if anybody else is a night owl like us. I try so hard to get on here earlier, but it just never works out. Usually I have my grandkids until 9 or 10 p.m. because I help my daughter out with watching them while she works. So, unfortunately, that means I get a late start doing this. Fortunately, I get to be in their lives on a regular basis, so I'm not complaining. I'm going to go ahead and start because... I'm going to um, transfer this video over to my YouTube channel. For those of you who have not heard, I do have a YouTube channel now. The YouTube channel is called Mother Malaka. It's Mother, and then Malaka is M-A-L-A-K-A-H. So you can check me out on YouTube and see any. Uh, I see the other videos that I've placed there. Um, I have been talking with young women in particular. So uh, I don't have a head covering because I'm not going to really be getting to a lot of scripture or anything tonight. I just want to talk just straight wisdom and straight practical advice woman to woman. So um, if you know any young women, specifically between the ages of 18 and 35, please let them know about my lives because I think they can get a lot out of them. Now, don't get me wrong, this is for any woman, any woman who finds the information relevant, but I'm specifically trying to reach young women because I think between those ages, we tend to make a lot of decisions that impact our lives for many, many years to come. And so I feel very much um, inclined and compelled towards those women. Um, so what I want to share with you tonight is about dating one more time. Um, we talked about dating last week, and I, so I want to jump into that again. And what I wanted to share with you was um, just about a misleading concept that I had as a young woman, and that was about the concept of a soulmate. Um, and this might, you know, some people might disagree with me on this, but just hear me out, okay? Um, Hollywood kind of sells us this idea that there is only one person for you, your soulmate. And um, I want to kind of talk about if that's true or not. Now, in Hebraic thought, uh, I'm, I don't even want to say Hebraic thought. I want to say Jewish thought. There is the concept of what's called a Bereshit. Bereshit means it is destined. And the concept that goes along with Bereshit is that there is one person that you are destined to marry. Um, so as I said, that's a Jewish concept. In Hebraic thought, um, there is some idea that there is a person who is suited for you, um, but that is not necessarily one person over your lifetime that is the only one that is suited for you. So when we start kind of delving into this idea of a soulmate, what can happen is we can get really caught up in believing that there are certain signs or wonders that accompanied our meeting of a person and or that accompanied our interaction with this person initially and as a result of those signs and wonders we may actually hold on to situations that are not necessarily fitted or suitable for us and so I want to kind of just take a look at that for a bit um, when you think about a soulmate you tend to think about that person who makes you feel um, really completed or can finish your sentences or that type of thing and um, that's nice and it, it makes you feel good emotionally to have that but in reality a good healthy relationship is not necessarily based on that 
it's based on character qualities. And so when you're picking out um, a person that you're going to respond to, and when I say respond to, it's my firm belief that uh, typically for a relationship to be successful, the male has to be initiating the um, the commitment. Now, I'll say that, you know, as a woman, you can definitely give a man an indication that you're interested in him. But if a man doesn't pursue you or basically give you the idea that he's interested in you, you may not want to to continue in, in that um, interaction. And the reason I say that is because a man who is sure about what he wants will, knows how to communicate that to you. He knows how to let you know that he's the one uh, for you or that he's interested in you. And so um, you, you want to start out with, with uh, that. You know, if you're responding to someone who's interested in you, if you're pursuing and if you're doing all the initiating and if you're doing all the phone calling and or letter writing or emailing or texting or whatever, you may want to back up a little bit and just take a look about a look at whether or not that man is really interested in you because typically a man who's interested in you will clearly communicate to you that he's interested in you. I, I know that some of us as women, we like to entertain the concept that well, you know, uh, this is a modern age and a modern time and I can pursue him and I can, you know, let him know that I'm interested in him. And uh, yeah, my sister Misty said it's in their nature to pursue. Amen, Misty. That's right. Con. It's in their nature to pursue. If they're not pursuing you, they have a reason why they're not pursuing you. And I don't mean, you know, that the man has to be like knocking down buildings to get to you. I just mean that he is clearly letting you know that he is interested in a relationship with you. If you have to wonder if he's the one for you, if you have to guess, if you have to just, you know, speculate on his actions towards you, he is not pursuing you. Men know how to let you know when they are interested in you, when they want you. And it may not be anything to do with your lack in any way if he's not pursuing you. It, it could likely be that it's just not his timing or he's just not ready to do that. Um, so, you know, don't take it personally if a man's not pursuing. Okay. Um, but just know that that means you shouldn't pursue either. Um, okay. So let's say you do have a male that's showing you that he's interested in you. How do you know if this is someone that is your quote unquote soulmate? I want to talk about that for a moment. Um, soulmate is more about a long-term outcome than it is an immediate connection. You can meet someone that you have an immediate connection with, who you have a very easy rapport with, who you feel like they are finishing your sentences, you're the, the jelly to their peanut butter. And that doesn't mean that that person has the character or the ability to commit to you in a relationship. Foundationally, character is what is going to keep a relationship strong. And connection is something that you can develop. Character is something that has to already be present when you enter into a relationship. I want to say a little side note to moms who are dating, single moms who are dating or who want to date. Um, I want to tell you a little story that I take out of nature. Okay. Um, in nature, the eagle mates with a specific male. And she does a little ritual type thing to determine what male she's going to mate with. And what she will do is she will fly up. She'll pick up, um, she'll pick up a stick or something um, that she can gather in her beak and she will um, fly to a certain altitude and once she gets to this altitude she will drop this stick um, and she will expect a male who is watching her because there may be more than one that's interested in her she'll drop this stick or twig from a certain altitude and the male 
will swoop in, grab that stick in his beak, not allowing it to hit the ground, and take it back up to the very same altitude that she dropped it from. There will be maybe two or three other uh, male eagles that are watching her um, and trying and uh, attempting to catch this twig for her. But it's only the one who catches it and brings it back up to that altitude that she will entertain. So she'll go through that ritual two or three times or more to eliminate uh, any male that can't grab that twig and bring it back up. She's not going to even consider him. So she does this a few times until she's down to just that one male. And when she's down to that one male, she will go up, she'll grab a twig and she'll go up as high as she possibly can soar. She'll drop that twig and wait to see what that male does. And if that male is able to catch that twig and bring it back up to the same altitude she dropped it from, that's the one she'll mate with. So let me recap. There may be multiple males that are interested in her. But she will take them through a process of proving before she will mate with them. And in that proving process, only the one who is able to catch that twig from the altitude she dropped it before it hits the ground and bring it back up to the altitude she dropped it from is the one she's going to mate with. Now why? Because when it's time... When she has eaglets and it's time to teach them how to fly, the way she teaches them is by dropping them out of her nest and then, you know, she stays nearby. But she drops them out of her nest and she watches them fall. And the eaglet has to get the idea to flap their wings so that they don't hit the ground. But if for some reason the eaglet isn't strong enough to do it yet or they can't figure it out, the male will swoop down, grab that eaglet, and bring it back up to the altitude that the female dropped it from. So the point is that she does not entertain any male that cannot bring or add stability to her children. And her children haven't even been born yet. Her progeny aren't even here yet, but she's thinking about the survival of her progeny. So I'm saying to single mothers who are considering dating, there is no way you should be accepting or entertaining the advances of a man who is not going to bring stability to the lives of your children. That's just something to think about. Okay, so we're going back to the soulmate thing because sometimes we get caught up in the connection and we forget the character. So before we move forward in a, in a relationship where we're becoming serious enough to consider this person as a mate, that we're going to live with this person, marry this person, we need to be making sure that this person has the character that is going to be uh, capable of building a foundation for a marriage with. Can, does this person keep their word? Do they tell you they're going to call at a certain time and then they don't? Do they tell you they're going to show up and do something at a certain time and then they don't? Do they always have an excuse why they couldn't come through like they said they were going to? These are things that dictate, that indicate character, okay? Um, do they uh, mislead you about important information in their life? Or maybe not, it's not even important information, but just misleading you and you don't even know why. They're just giving you misinformation. That's a warning sign. The character must override the connection. Now, soulmates, I keep coming back to that concept. What do I really think about that? I think that there are people that we can easily connect with and that feel very comfortable to us emotionally and feel very attractive to us physically and may even feel some type of uh, uh, connection spiritually. But at the end of the day, those things don't really overcome the day-to-day -day issues that you're going to face as a, a married couple. You're going to need to be able to communicate with each other. You're going to need to be able to be honest with each other. You're going to need to be able to keep your word and your commitment to each other. You're going to need to be loyal to each other. You're going to need to be able to agree to come to logical conclusions or to have some standard of agreement. Um, of course, for me, the standard is Torah. You know, so if you're entertaining the advances of a man who is not practicing your faith, where do you agree 
on what will you agree concerning the decisions in your life. So soulmate oftentimes gets confused with connection. I want to I want to just kind of put this suggestion out there for you, something to think about. What if a soulmate is actually someone that over time you fashion your soul to fit? Yeah, kind. Misty says, some men say a lot of good things, but their actions prove otherwise. Love is a verb, an action word. It's doing and not just saying. Kind, Misty, kind. That's so true. It's doing and not just saying. What, do, what does a man's actions say? That's what you've got to be looking at because his actions are a result of his character. Okay? His character is born from his thoughts. His thoughts are born from his uh what he meditates upon so his his meditation his thoughts create his character and his character creates his actions so you may feel connected to this person oh this is my soul connection but is this person a stable suitable partner for a future does he have the character qualities to build a foundation for marriage that's a that's a major thing that we have to consider before we entertain his advances right because he can pursue but can he commit and when he commits can he build these are the things that I wanna think about when I'm deciding whether or not to entertain someone's uh, advances and so uh, I wanna say another thing about the soulmate idea you know when you get married um, and, and I know a lot of women who are modern you know, progressive, quote-unquote women, or consider themselves feminists, would probably be angered by what I'm saying right now, but I'm going to say it anyway because I've just found it to be the truth. When you get married, a lot of times, um, because of the way that men are made, the way they're wired psychologically and the way women are wired psychologically, you're going to find your life um, adapting to theirs, your lifestyle adapting to their lifestyle. It doesn't matter if you have more education than the man. It doesn't matter if you have more money initially than the man, if you have a higher paying job. It doesn't matter. If that male is a strong, forward thinking male, whether his forward thoughts are right or wrong, you're going to find that the decisions that he makes are going to cause your life to conform to his, whether that's in an upward trajectory or whether that's in a downward trajectory. It's just something that is. It's not, I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying it is, it just exists. This is what happens. Many, many women that I've seen over time who have considered themselves to be at a certain plateau in their career or a certain, um, you know, place of success or accomplishment made a poor choice in marriage and ended up in a much lower state or condition than they were in when they got married. So understand what I'm saying. It is just kind of like a natural um, thing that happens. You know how um, when you look at water and water is moving down a, a lake or a river, you know, it's not stagnant, but it's moving. How if, if the water isn't even, it will continue to move until it, it reaches its level and then it becomes still. There's a movement that happens in the relationship between a man and a woman until you meet each other on a certain level. It's And nine times out of ten, it's going to be on whatever level that man is on. So you want to consider this. There's nothing wrong with marrying a man who makes less money than you or marrying a man who's less uh, formally educated than you. I'm not putting that down at all. There are many good, hardworking men who just aren't, you know, getting the high paying jobs. Or, that doesn't dictate whether they're a good man or, or a worthy man. What I'm saying to you is that if his character takes him in a downward trajectory, if he lies a lot, if he's um, un untrustworthy, if he's a troublemaker, if he's angry, if he's a drug user, these things will take your life in a downward trajectory as well. 
it's easier to pull somebody down than it is to pull them up. Some, if you're standing on a chair trying to lift him, is he going to lift you? I mean, if you, are you going to lift him or is he going to pull you down? So my point is character. Character above all things. Is this someone you can respect? If this is not a man you can respect, don't waste his time. And don't waste your time. Because I'm telling you, to be respected by his woman is more powerful, more intoxicating, more exhilarating to a man than telling him you love him a million times. Respecting him is like air to him. And so if you don't respect the man right off the gate, you don't respect him. You don't respect what he does for a living. You don't respect his vocabulary. You don't respect his educational level. If you don't respect him, do not entertain his advances because you will do nothing but crush him over time. So because as a woman, it is our nature to fashion ourselves around a man, to fit around him, to basically meet him where he's at. You want to make sure that this man is traveling in a direction that you feel that Yah has called you to be going in before you start fashioning and fitting yourself around him. So is a soulmate someone that you just feel an instant connection with? Or is it someone that you decide to build a, fa a marriage and a family with and you find yourself fitting and fashioning yourself to meet his needs? And to, and to be his helper. And over time, you find that you are his soulmate. You are the match to the things in his emotions that he needs. I want to suggest a question. I, I, wanna, I want you to ask yourself this week. Am I believing that a soulmate is supposed to be this easy breezy, no complicated connection, instant connection? Or do I, am I able to really rationally look at the, the steps that it takes to be in a soulmate uh, relationship? Do I recognize that it takes communication, that it takes commitment, that it takes time, that it takes giving, that it takes sacrifice? So I really want you to explore that idea of soulmate this week because I know that as a young woman, that whole concept took me off base a lot. And I know I said I was going to talk about, you know, how to assess if a man is someone that you want to uh, take a, uh, you know, receive their their advances. And I kind of touched on that a little bit tonight. And I'm going to be prayerful about what we talk about next to see if maybe we want to continue down that path of how to assess a man. But um, I want to just say that, you know, sometimes what y'all will do is he'll bring you someone who's actually designed to polish you, to, to buff out those rough edges, you know, to teach you how to hold your tongue, to teach you how to be kind in the midst of, um, of a trial, to teach you how to be um, compassionate uh, when someone has disappointed you. A soulmate is not necessarily about just someone that makes you feel giddy and connected. A soulmate is about someone who brings out the flaws in you and causes you to have to stretch and 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 release things that are unlike Yah and grow in ways that, that Yah wants you to grow in. And this is how your soul becomes made it to this other person because this other person is almost like the key to unlocking the best you. You know, life is mostly about how you respond to things and not so much about the things that happen themselves. In life, everybody has rain. Everybody has sun. It's how you respond to the rain and how you respond to the sun that determines the type of person you're going to be. So I'm going to say that a soulmate, if, if my husband is my soulmate, is more about how I respond to him than it is about necessarily the instant connection that we had when we met. Anyway, that, that's really what I wanted to share tonight. 
Um, I don't have any specific scriptures that I want to leave with you. Purposely didn't cover my head because I wasn't planning to get into really any scriptures. I just wanted to kind of give some practical woman to woman advice and older woman advice to younger women. And so if I were going to sum this up in a nutshell, I would say don't believe the hype behind the whole concept of soulmate. Is there just one perfect person for you? Probably not. There's probably several different people that you'll meet over your lifetime who you can have a great connection with. The question is, when you meet someone with a great connection, do they have the character to build on? Do you have the character to build on? And once you start building, are you willing to stay committed so that your souls can be fashioned together and they can be mated together? That's the real question. That's all I have to say tonight. I, I didn't mean to go as long as I did, but I hope that you got something out of what I was saying. And I hope that you'll share this video with other young women or other single women, especially single moms. And um, you'll invite people to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Mother Malaka. And um, I look forward to sharing with you guys next week. Feel free to message me if there are topics that you want to talk about. I mean, we're going to get into some other stuff. We're going to get into marriage. We're going to talk about marriage. We're going to get into talking about parenting. We're going to talk about all kinds of things that just have to do with being a woman. So um, I love you with the love of the Most High. And until we talk to, uh, again together, shalom, shalom. And thank you, Ebony and Misty, for joining me. And I see Suzanne. And I don't know you, Suzanne, but thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys have a blessed rest of the night. Bye.